4K mixed frame rate commercial video editing workflow. Four production teams, 4,000 plus clips, all 4K footage to generate a three minutes first cut within one week. Today, I would like to bring you a very challenging project I worked on recently and walk you through what's the most efficient way in my mind to edit any video in Premiere. This workflow is for freelance editor. It may not suit for a production company with a lot of people in the editing team. This is a pretty long video containing the entire workflow, but also some tips and tricks of Premiere. So here is a book of content. You can use it to jump to the section you're most interested in if you don't want to watch the entire video. The situation. The client handed me one 9 terabyte promise RAID and one 10 terabyte G drive. Contains 4,000 plus clips shot by four production teams within five days on a cruise. The goal of the client is to create a three minute video to showcase the stunning design and the experience of their new ship for a launch ceremony event. They prefer no voiceover, no aero interview, just a b-roll cut on one music track they have already picked. The organization of the clips was not ideal. The clips were renamed with date, team name, and location, but all 4,000 plus clips are all in the same folder. Personally, I prefer not to touch the root files. You can create folders with dates or other metadata on your hard drive and then just dump footage directly from your SD card using Media Browser in Premiere. Check the Ingest button and click on the gear icon. Choose Copy under the Ingest tab. Choose the location on the hard drive where you want to copy the SD card footage to. Click OK. Highlight all the footage, right-click, and choose Import. You will see not only the footage got imported into Premiere project file, but they also get copied to a hard drive. Then do all the organization inside Premiere. This will reduce the risk of file corruption. But I will have to work with what I have here. Step 1. Import, Proxy, and Organization how to organize the files depends on the nature of this video. Since the client wants to showcase the chronological building process and architecture of the cruise, that means they like to show each venue waving inside a chronological building structure. So the best organization method is by venues. I made a list of all the venues and communicated with the clients to figure out their priority on those venues. In the meantime, I started my proxy creating process. There are two frame rates. One is 2998, another is 60 frames per second for slow motion clips. So you will need two different ways to create a proxy. First, choose all 2998 frames per second clips, right click, select Create Proxy. Choose QuickTime 1280 by 720 Apple ProRes 422 Proxy. Leave next to original media in proxy folder checked. Once you hit OK, it will bring up your media encoder and start the proxy process. Pause it, because we need to do all the slow motion clips too. So first, right click on those slow mo clips, choose Modify Interpret Footage. Change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. Then repeat the proxy process. Once all slow mo clips got inside the media encoder, pause it again. Choose all the slow motion clips you just added, right click and choose interpret footage. Change the frame rate again from 60 frames per second to 30 frames per second. Hit start button, let it run overnight. It took almost 40 hours to finish my proxy process because I have 4,000 plus clips. In the meantime, you can start organization process in Premiere. I created folders by venue name and organized the clips this way. They did rename the clips by venue, so it saved me a lot of time. When the proxy process is done, bring up proxy column in project panel. Right click on the column names row inside the project panel. Click on metadata display. Type proxy and check proxy. 
scroll to the far right column, which is a proxy column. If it says attached, that means the proxy files have been created and attached to the high res original media. Highlight the toggle proxy button to add it with proxy. This is how it looks like after finishing the organization. So as you can see, we have 39 folders here. Each folder represents a venue or one activity. Step 2. Make footage selection. I value every clip and I believe it represents the effort of the cinematographer. So I always skim all the clips from beginning to end. The procedure in the footage selection process is as below. Create a 4K timeline. Name it Workbench. Change the sequence setting based on your footage setting. Start to view all the footage folder by folder. Add a marker on timeline. Give it the same name as the folder you are going through. Mark the in and out point while watching clips. Hit comma key to bring it down to the timeline. And that's your selection of this clip. This process is really streamlined. You will find yourself able to quickly finish a folder. Once you are done with one folder, stop. Try to arrange your selections roughly. Here, you don't need to do any refined editing. Just try to group things together. For example, you can put all the signage selections together at the beginning, then show all the white shots. Lastly, show the design close-ups. Give it a loose structure, which will save you a lot of time when editing. Keep doing this until you skimmed all the folders. And here is how the workbench timeline look once you finish the selection making. If you think certain contents deserve its own folder, feel free to do so. All this organization is to help you to familiar with the footage and allow you to quickly access to clips in editing. Once you finish this step, you rarely need to go back to your project panel, look for clips among a sea of contents. If you feel this workbench timeline is too long, you want to break it up, feel free to do so too. You can make two timelines, one called Workbench Restaurant, one called Workbench Entertainment, and put all the restaurant venues clips on Restaurant Timeline and all the other clips on Entertainment Timeline. Step 3. Lay in music and sketch up story structure. In this step, we need to think about two requirements from the clients. They want a roughly 3 minutes video with only B-roll cut on music. So first, let's make another timeline, name it Cut 1. Lay the client's music track on the timeline. Luckily, this track is around 3 minutes, so I don't need to mix it at all. If mixing is needed, do it now before you start editing. Next, listen to the music. You may need to listen to it multiple times, and in the meantime, imagine the visual and the storyline in your mind. What does the beginning of the music sound like? What mood it conveys? What visual goes with it? and what should be the beginning of the story chronologically. When you have an idea, add a marker and write down the notes. This is the brainstorm stage. Give room for your wildest idea. You can always revise it later. Let's listen to the music together. The beginning feels poetic and hopeful. It's like morning, something wonderful is forming. Drum comes in at 15 seconds, which gives more gravity. At one minute mark, it goes into another stage, with a feeling of marching. This chapter ends around two minutes. Then we come back to a more mild poetic section. Around two minutes 30 seconds, the choir comes in, opens a new chapter with more energy. The music ends on a high note at three minutes then has a decrescendo which is perfect for an end graphic title card. The visual we choose need to pair with the energy of the music. Think about the storyline. The ship is born with precise design, high-end materials in a small harbor in Italy. Doesn't the beginning of the music fit into this story perfectly? 
So I put a marker and note design building precise of the ship. From 38 seconds, I want to start to show the design, the various menus. And from one minute mark, the marching section, I want to start using speed ramp to showcase more menus, areas of the ship. From 2 minute to 2 minute 30 seconds, a more poetic section, I want to bring in nature, nightlife, and people. From 2 minute 30 second, the choir comes in, I will show the most stunning visual of the ship, more exterior drone shots and end with a graphic title card with a decrescendo. Now you have the full structure of the story. This step is the most important part in the entire process. Spend more time here will save you a lot of time in the editing process later. Another good thing to do here is to sign this structure to your client and get their approval before you start editing. Make sure both of you and your client are on the same page. Step 4. Add visual based on structure. Once you finished the three previous steps, this step is rather easy and quick. People always think this part called editing and takes the longest in the process, but it's the opposite. The preparation where you do footage selection, figure out the story structure is the most time-consuming part. Once you get those done, you can finish the first cut pretty fast. So let's break down my editing timeline. For 4000 plus 4K clips, 6 terabyte in size, the proxy process took about 40 hours. Footage organization took 2.5 hours. Footage selection took 20 hours. First cut editing only took 9 hours. Now I'm going to show you briefly how I used the workbench timeline in this editing stage. First. You dock your workbench timeline on top of your editing timeline. I have already decided to show the building process at the beginning of the video, which will include the visuals of the prototype on computer, design blueprint, construction, workers putting materials in. So I go to my workbench timeline, check my marker name, locate the design selection, skim the footage with a cursor, Follow your visual instinct, bring down all the clips you like, rearrange them while listening to the music. The edit will form naturally. Keep doing this until you arrive at the end of your music track. Then watch your edit again and again, each time you may find something awkward, rearrange it, see if it works better. After you are pretty much satisfied with your cut, move to the effect. You may want to add some sound effect, transition effect, or you want to figure out the theme of the ending graphic. I normally provide my client with a rather polished first cut, so I will include most of the effects in my first cut. There might be couple revisions depends on your client, but no matter what notes they gave you, as long as you have a grid on the story structure, all their later notes will be minor and easy to accommodate because you have your magical workbench timeline. If they don't like this shot, just go to that section on the workbench, pick another one. This is one of the reasons why we spend so much time creating that workbench timeline. With years of commercial editing experience, what I told you here is what I learned throughout the years with trial and error. Hope this workflow brings you some organization in your work and please subscribe to the channel if you think this video is useful. See you next time.